Hi everybody, today I am taking a look at the Faber-Castell text liner highlighters. These were suggested to me in the comments of a recent video. I believe it was the, uh, what was it, the Statler video where I was questioning about the black highlighter, which by the way, if you did not watch that video, you should totally watch it because the black highlighter is so weird, but a lot of people made some great points about how it's good for redacting where you still need to read the information, but you want to fax it to somebody. One of the reasons these were suggested is because there's metallic highlighters. What the actual fuck? So when I went online, I got three packs. I got, of course, I got the metallic ones because you know, and then I got the pastel ones because a lot of the highlighters I've been looking at have been pastel. That's what's trendy and also what's cute. <laughs> but I also decided to get the super fluorescent ones because why not? I could not figure out if there were other colors besides these. I I did some research, which is very confusing, but this is still a pretty decent range of colors. So price wise, when I bought these on Amazon, the super fluorescent were 11 bucks for eight. The pastels were $8 for eight, and the metallic were $7 for four. Obviously, the metallic are quite a bit pricier, but I would imagine that might be in part because of what they're made of, but it might be the way that pricing works. I don't know. The information I got about these highlighters is that they have um, the ability for three line widths, depending on how you hold the chisel, they're chisel tipped, but the, depending on how you hold the chisel tip, you can get a one millimeter, a two millimeter, or a five millimeter line. They are water-based, odorless, smudge proof, and then for the metallic ones, most interestingly, there is no need to shake, prime, or pump these. If you watch my acrylograph uh, video where I talk about paint pens and how you have to shake them up and get them started, that's the same for a lot of metallic pens I've used. You have to give them a good shake. There's like a ball inside of the pen to help you like, you know, homogenize. That's not the word I want. I'm, I'm on like low amounts of caffeine this morning, you guys. Being able to go right in and use them rather than having to rely on, you know, getting them started, which is a pain in the ass. And so this could be a cool, a cool thing. We'll bust out one of the pastels. We're going to get to the metallic ones when we swatch. But for the first, to just look at them. So this is what they look like. They're... They're short squat ones. One of the reasons it was suggested to look at these is that the, and if you were the person who left the comment, please, I'm so bad at, at screenshotting and saving the comments. But one of the reasons was that they're just a little bit more comfortable when it comes to the squat size, the Stabilo or the Statler versions. It's kind of a rectangle, but it's smoothed off. It doesn't have this ridging like the Tech Surfer, and it's like a straight rectangle rather than like kind of tapered like the Stabilo. They all have basically the same size chisel tips. All right, let's see the different sizes of this nib. So I guess that would be the one millimeter. Would that be the two millimeter? and the five millimeter. So the way you would get it would be to completely turn the pen upside down to get the very, very, very tip, and then turn the pen the other way, but you're still trying to just write with the tip is how you get the slightly thicker version and then flat on the situation. Well, they seem to be pretty quick drying. Let's take a second here and see how they work as highlighters. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this kind of peachy color from the pastels and then we're going to grab a yellow i will add when it comes to the fluorescent version it comes with two fluorescent yellow highlighters like there are two this is actually even with eight is only seven colors and then we're going to grab a metallic one because i want to we'll grab the gold to just go with the same idea because i want to see how this works but for now we're going to just see how they highlight over something It looks like there was a tiny, tiny bit of smearing with the pastel, but that may have been because it wasn't completely dry yet when I used it. Now this metallic one, there is a shimmer in it, but it's really hard to see. I don't think you could see it on camera. I can barely see it in person. I'm gonna just do this on its own here for a second without any writing. Yeah, I don't think you can see it at all, but there is a very, very subtle shimmer, like a like a silvery kind of glitter that's in it. It's just not 
showing up very well here on camera. Okay, so the silver, whoo, okay, the silver already. I Again, I, I don't know how well you see it, but I think you can pick it up a bunch better on camera than you can the, I can see it way better than the gold. So the silver is much more metallic than the gold, which is called glamorous gold. This is called shiny silver, much more shiny. So this one is pearl rose. I'm assuming a rose gold. Also very shimmery. And then brilliant ruby, which is also very shimmery. So let me put the gold here. Yeah, the gold is just very, 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 very faint. The other three, like you can see them shine on camera, but the gold, it's just, I wonder if I shake it, it'll work better. I just feel like the gold is probably the very, by far the least shiny. But then I guess the question is, for these shinier ones, how well do they highlight shiny? Take the silver puppy over it. Oh, you could still read it. It is slightly more obscured because of the glitter. Let's see here. Let's just test these two colors as well. Because now I'm like super curious. Yeah, you can still read with the shiny highlighters. They're just shinier. So yeah, the gold out of these ones seems to be the most kind of garbo of the three. All right, I'm going to swatch all of the colors and then we can talk about them. Here is the color selection. We already talked about the metallic and I can see it again here that the uh, these three colors are super metallic and the gold is kind of disappointing. When it comes to the pastel colors, they are gorgeous. I love like this little rainbow of colors here. I think they're really pretty. I think it's a good mix of colors. I think the one thing that's really missing is maybe one more lighter color. These all tend to be a little bit on the more saturated side. So like a paler color might have been nicer to have. I don't know which one I would have though, because it looks like we have the entire, entire rainbow here, maybe a paler pink, but I don't know if I'd take any of these away. So it's a good mix. The, sup the super fluorescent colors are gorgeous. The only two I would say don't strike me as quote unquote super fluorescent are the purple and the blue. I have seen more like bright 1980s super fluorescent purple and blue highlighters before, but they're really nice. I especially like the green. Bleed wise, now this is, this is, you know, the bleedy loish term, but it gives you a good idea. It looks like the pastels bleed the least. They shadow, but even the tiny, like the puddle at the end of the highlighter seems to barely, 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 barely come through. The super fluorescent has a little bit more of that coming through, but really it's mostly, it's shadowing. The metallics, however, are very, very bleedy, especially at the spots where the, like the pool happens when you like at the end of a stroke. Gold is also as bleedy as the other guys. The red is the bleediest, but the gold also is bleedy. And for as little payoff as you get for shimmer, it's almost like, I feel like this gold is, is unless you like, like the mustardy kind of color, it's not that great. I did some work ahead of time to kind of compare colors when there's nothing comparative to the metallics because it's obvious that they're, they're just a completely different realm of highlighters and the mild liners do not focus on fluorescence. There are some fluorescent kinds of colors like the yellow is a fluorescent, but it's a different, like it's still pale compared to how bright the fluorescent is in the text liners. There is one color though, that is very, very, very similar. Is it this purple? No. Not that purple, it's this one. No, not that one either. Which one was it? Magenta is the closest to the purple, but honestly, the super fluorescent ones don't have, because they're so saturated, there really isn't super comparable colors for this one. With the pastels on the other hand, I think I found matches for almost every single one of them. For the orange or the like peachy color, this is the one that that did not really have a match. The closest I came was the gold from the model liners, but it was way darker. So for the red, the close match was this guy and it's marigold. 
And I think that actually it's pretty close. Let me put this guy right next to it here so you can see. A little bit darker, but still very, very close. And then for the pinky color, we have red. For the purple, a little bit cooler, but we have violet. For the blue, was almost a spot on match for that like that like kind of darker blue. And I used, what was this one? Dark blue. And then for the brighter blue, again, a really great match. And this one was cyan. And then again, another great match for the green is, uh, what is this one? Summer green. And then the green here, not exactly the same, but similar is uh, just the mild liner green. So basically what I can tell you is, is if you like these text liners, you like their shapes and everything else, then go for it. But if you already have mild liners, you're going to have very, very similar colors, except for that peachy color. So if that peachy color really calls to you, then is it worth buying the other highlighters? Who knows? The fluoros though, the fluorescent ones are nice and bright. If you have the mild liners, these would be a worthy addition color wise. If you think you're going to use them. I personally don't use super, super fluorescent highlighters. I really like the pale pastel style. So these would not be ones I would necessarily use. The metallics are stunning. I could see myself using them. And ironically, the gold would be the last one I would use anyway, because gold's not my color, but I love these three colors very, very, very much. However, if you're going to spend seven bucks on four markers and one of them does not perform the way the rest of them do, you might want to reconsider that. This may have just been a dud. I don't know. There might be, if you've had these markers and your gold performs better than this, please let us know in the comments. But for me, I'm more willing to like have a yucky color in a set of colors if I got a bunch of colors. But with four, that's a quarter of your purchase being kind of jank. Out of all three of the fatty boom baddie highlighters I've been looking at, the Stabilo, the Statler, and these guys, these ones feel the best in my hand. They are not the most Instagram pretty. The Stabilo ones probably still reign in terms of the most gorgeous for a freaking, you know, picture. But I like them and I think the metallics are really interesting, even if I don't like the gold one. Part of me really wants to use like, like the rose gold one all the time because I'm a hoe for rose gold. But I don't know, man. Maybe. We shall see. Anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear about other pens you'd like me to take a look at, etc., etc. Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, you guys. Wash your hands, subscribe, and vote. All of those things. And until next time, peace out.